Sitting here with Tourism Company Executive Director Jose Esquerdo, we basically want to get an update of what's going on at the airport, at the cruise ships, and you know anything that's happening at the hotels that we may need to know about in terms of booking. Let's start with the airport. Um, how are operations at the airport right now? Well, we're happy to announce that uh, operations are, are pretty much back to normal at this point. Uh, we've uh, the, the airport is fully operational now and it's operating 24/7. The uh, initial issues with the uh, radar that were affected. Uh, air traffic have been addressed, uh, as was the issue with uh, military flights taking up around 60% of the slots. Uh, those have been now uh, re-diverted uh, to uh, uh, Roseville Roads, uh, so it eases up uh, traffic and uh, prioritizes what uh, commercial flights and flight service, which is necessary. So from six, seven flights that we had initially post-storm, uh, we're looking at 71 flights yesterday and the expectation that that number continues to uh, increase as airlines uh, create their own itineraries. Okay, what about, is there a backlog of passengers? Are there any cancellations happening in terms of flights or has that yeah. normalized? There, 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 I've seen some cancellations in the uh, flights early in the morning. Uh, that might be due to uh, lack of availability uh, at rooms in, for, for crews, uh, uh, for airline crews. We're, we're working close with hotels to identify availability because that's a priority obviously um, but it, it's as close to normal as it can be uh, two weeks uh, three weeks out of a major storm like like Maria uh, in terms of the ports uh, we're seeing that the uh, cruise industry is uh, normalizing again uh, just uh, this past weekend Royal Caribbean had uh, its adventure of the seas uh, resume its home port operations to Puerto Rico that's incredibly encouraging uh, they came in and uh, around 3,000 passengers uh, we're, we're uh, embarked on that boat uh, for, for a cruise ship. Uh, and what, so. what are you doing with those passengers? Because really the tours that it's, they it's, use it's a, No, no, it's home port. Uh, it's a home so, port. So, okay. so it means uh, the travel is generated from Puerto Rico. Ah. It begins in Puerto Rico. So that's the importance of the airport. Because people fly to Puerto mm -hmm. Rico and then take the cruise ship okay. and go to the islands. I see. Uh, so, so, so it's that's, a closed loop. It's it, not like... It, yeah, okay. but, but they made a complete turnaround okay. and, and they were able to leave. And following suit is Carnival. And this weekend we'll get the fascination here as well to resume its home porting activity. Uh, that's also in Encouraging. In total, we'll see around 5,000 passengers get on board a cruise ship this weekend, and it sends that powerful signal for the transit ships. Uh, transit ships were expecting uh, November to have uh, an update uh, of them resuming operations. Uh, uh, Celebrity uh, and its summit is resuming on schedule for its own porting operation, and transit calls are expected as early as uh, first week of November. Uh, so, so the cruise ship industry has proven very resilient. Just yesterday, we had top-level management from Royal Caribbean come to Puerto Rico, meet with uh, the governor, and I was part of that meeting. Uh, and they reaffirmed their commitment to uh, Puerto Rico, and they're uh, very important industry partners, and we're uh, really happy to count on them. And as as we uh, rebuild stronger. Now. What about conventions? Have you had yep. cancellations in terms of? Yeah, well, cancellations are, are obviously normal. What we're uh, working closely with Meet Puerto Rico, uh, the DMO charged with uh, promoting group. Uh, visits to, to Puerto Rico. Uh, they're actually participating now in Vegas of IMAX, uh, which is a, uh, the big summit uh, in terms of groups. And what we're encouraging groups to do is, uh, if possible, reschedule. Uh, see a couple months, a couple weeks down the line, but not to cancel their trip. Uh, we've seen that our hotel properties are, are up and running uh, around, uh, of the 155 endorsed properties that we have, the tourism company, more than half of them are already operational, and that number might be even higher. We just haven't had communication with all of them, so we're around 81 uh, 81 of those uh, 155 properties are already operational. So groups uh, is an important uh, a segment that we're catering to, as is the diaspora. Uh, something I I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, I think it was already one of the personas that we wanted to attract to come visit Puerto Rico. Uh, but it's that uh, that desire that, that brings from within the Puerto Rican to reunite with family and friends, especially in the aftermath of, uh, of an event of this magnitude. So what a perfect opportunity for us to retune our messaging, refocus our strategy, and have uh, these people come to Puerto Rico. Uh, they've already organized themselves uh, in, in cities in the stateside uh, and come enjoy Christmas with their family uh, and it, it's an opportunity to help our economy as well as we're confident that tourism will again be a driver of economic development. Now you spoke of hotels. There are a number of properties that have not 
communicated at all? For example, the WNBA. I've visited the WNBA. Is it open? Uh, no, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not open. Uh, but but again, I met with a general manager of, of the W. Uh, they suffered uh, some damage, some serious damage, uh, and they, they're making their assessment, risk assessment, talking to the insurance companies. Uh, they're a facility that depends a lot on the environment that they create, vegetation. That sort of consideration is important uh, in terms of uh, assessing when they'll reopen. Uh, but the the, oppor the the opportunity here is to uh, rebuild and, and uh, fix that product where, where it needs. Okay, how many uh, other hotels are on that same predicament? I heard um, Conquistador is in Mexico. Yeah, uh, it, uh, they've talked about uh, January for new reservations. Most other properties we're seeing now middle of October, so in a couple days to uh, uh, end of October as, as the date they've established for new reservations. Okay. What so, about St. Regis? Is that St. St. Regis, again, it's another property in, in the ultra luxury uh, department that depends on vegetation, on the environment, so they'll probably take a little bit longer for their product to be up to the standard of, of the flag. And I guess uh, that also goes for the, to the rich reserve. Rich Correct. Okay. Correct. So they're also um, but that we haven't had a, a specific date from them. They're, they're working on, on, okay. on their uh, assessment right now. Having said all that, um, again, do you have any kind of prediction as to how the tourism season will look? Well, it won't, it won't look exactly as we thought it would look, uh, but it's an opportunity to uh, change our message, change our narrative, uh, highlight the, uh, the spontaneous acts of kindness of the Puerto Ricans, uh, highlight the, uh, the success stories of hotels that are able to uh, build up, uh, uh, highlight tourism attractions that are up and running again. We just got news from Toro Verde that they will be functioning during the high season. That's quite remarkable, and it gives you just an example. Uh, Cueva Ventana in Arecibo is, is up and running. Uh, so, so again, it's a very resilient industry. Uh, it was hard hit, uh, but I'm confident that, that, that we'll be able to uh, convey the stories of success and, and build a narrative around that because I always say that at the core of every successful tourism destination, it's people and, and, and hospitality. I just yesterday saw an article on the Washington Post uh, where a, a family that was stranded in Puerto Rico and had to spend the uh, hurricane on a shelter um, they were able to tell that they had a nightmare of a vacation, but Puerto Ricans protected them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and those are the stories that will allow us to uh, take that awareness that we have as a destination and turn it into something positive. First responders that are here right now, I've talked to all of them. They always say they'll come back to Puerto Rico and they'll come back with their families. That's tourism. It's not the tourism we had in mind, uh, but it's tourism nonetheless, and, and, we'll, and we'll seize that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.